Hello, this is John again, and uh, today I'm going to be talking about my new acquisition. It's a Sheldon 11-inch lathe, and I picked it up uh, just a short while ago. And it had some problems and issues, and so I've been working through those, but uh, I haven't seen anything online really talking about the, the underneath drive. So I thought I'd kind of go through that and then a few other things on the lathe that uh, might be a little different than a normal lathe. <clears throat> so let's get to it. So I guess first thing I want to talk about is the, they call it a U-type drive in the literature. Um, it's an underneath drive and so it has these two handles and each handle has uh, two positions basically and then the right handle also has a neutral position. So the left handle now is in the leftmost position and then you can switch it up. And now it's in the right position. So this is two speeds. And then the right handle also has two speeds plus a neutral. So the right handle's first speed is here. Neutral is there. And there's the second speed. And I created this little graphic to uh, show the, the RPMs at the different positions. So when both handles are out, that's slow speed. Next step up is with this handle up. Next higher speed is with this handle down and this handle up. And then high speed is with both handles up. And these just slide off. They're keyed on the shafts, but they don't have any type of uh, set screw to hold them on so they just slide off. And that way you can open the door to get to the, the belts or tensioning or whatever. And I guess I'll talk a little about this. <clears throat> There's three sets of belts. There's belts going from the motor up to this first shaft on the left side and then belts going from this shaft to this second shaft and then belts going from the second shaft up to the headstock. And so we have adjustments on all three of them. The center bolt here adjusts this tension, this bolt adjusts this tension, and this bolt adjusts tension up to the headstock. I'll just turn it on here so you can see what's going on in there. So again, this is low speed uh, indirect drive. second gear. Third gear would be this one over to the left and this one up. But now I'm just going to put them both in high gear. So that's an overview of uh, the four-speed underdrive. 
and of course then we have back gears too so essentially this thing has eight speeds and to get to the back gears there's this handle in the back rotate that up and pull the pin out that's right here and then we have right here. Next thing I like to talk about is uh, the quick change gearbox. So this is a single tumbler type. Um, this machine is from around 1940, and uh, apparently in the sometime in the 50s, I think, they went to a twin tumbler. So this one has the single lever down here, this three position lever here, and then a two position lever here. And this chart tells you all the threading details uh, based on where you have this set. And then this is the reversing lever. It's got a neutral up position and a down position. So right now we have it in the leftmost slot here. Up here we have it in A. And here we have it in, what is that? That is the, the down position. So that would be here. To move it, you loosen this nut in here. And up, there's the down position and the up position. So here's down and here's up. So we have it down position, A, and tumbler in this column. So we are at 32 threads per inch. So if I move this up, now we are on these three rows. And so at A here, we are now at four threads per inch. says here longitudinal feeds are 10 times the threads per inch. So if we were up here at 4 threads per inch, if we use the clutch on the carriage instead of the, uh, the half nut lever, then we'd be at 40 units per inch. So this lever has three positions. It's got an a, B, and C, and there's a pointer up here on the, the top side of the lever. So it's at A now. There's B. And there is C. A is the fastest, B is in the middle, and then C is the slowest. So right now we have it the slowest. So now we have this lever down, this at C, and the tumbler all the way to the left. You can see this is turning very slowly uh, where we have the lever set. I'll engage the half nuts.
Next thing I like to talk about is the the apron. We have uh, longitudinal feed here, uh, cross slide, all the typical stuff, compound rest, and then uh, we have a lever down here and a clutch, and these are for the power feed, and so the middle position here is neutral. So if I put, put this over, now when we engage the clutch, and this is locked out when this is moved over from neutral. Now we slide this over to the left, and now we're engaging the, the cross feed. So now when I tighten up the clutch, the cross feed will be going. thing I'd like to talk about is uh, this little button on the front of the headstock. When I saw pictures online I was curious as to what it was but uh, I couldn't find any information about it. So all it is is a spring-loaded plunger that engages this bull gear and I'm assuming that's to be able to take the spindle off a lot of times people engage the back gears, which locks everything up. But uh, I'm thinking that this is to be able to take off the chuck when you have a, a threaded spindle. This lathe was out of adjustment in quite a few areas, and so I kind of went through it. And uh, One thing I noticed was when the back gears were engaged, it has a stop both up and down and the stop up should stop the motion of this before the gears engage too closely and when I got the lathe they were too tight and so all you have to do is uh, loosen the set screw and move this arm on the shaft a little bit one way or the other to get it so you have just a slight amount of clearance between these gears and these gears. One thing I do want to mention about the underdrive uh, if you're fortunate enough to have one of these um, it basically gives an 8-speed lathe without having to change any belts which is uh, pretty phenomenal, it seems, in my opinion, that something this old has a, an 8-speed gearbox. Well, it's not really a gearbox, but uh, essentially it's an 8-speed gearbox without having to change belts. And uh, <clears throat> if you go online and research these, uh, there's places that will say that you can shift these on the fly while the uh, motor is running. And uh, John Knox who uh, worked for Sheldon Machine Company back in the day. Uh, he's on the Yahoo website that is for Sheldon lathes, and he says, do not shift these while the motor or spindle is, are turning. Shift it uh, only while everything's at rest. And it's because they have uh, kind of a primitive clutch system. It's a, It looks like a square peg that shifts into uh, a slot and so you should not ever shift those while the, the machine is running. Well there you have it. Uh, this lathe is, uh, what is it, almost 70 or more than 75 years old. 
This was made in 1940. It's almost 80 years old and uh, still runs good. It does have some wear on it, but that's to be expected. That means it's been used and that's what these things were, that's what they were built for. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.